still a big focus on the situations around the links between organized crime and some people living here in South Africa. A man on Interpol's most wanted list was killed in Constantia in Cape Town on Thursday. Krasimir Kamenov was among the four people shot dead. Bulgaria's government confirming that he had been charged with killing a Bulgarian government official early last year. Aaron Hyman is a journalist at Times Live. Aaron, good afternoon to you. I really appreciate the time. So much going on here. I mean, we have someone on Interpol's most wanted list living in Constantia. Do we know what he was doing there? What kind of life Kamenov was actually living here? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Stephen, and to, good afternoon to your viewers. Um, well, he was uh, living a life of luxury. <laughs> I can say that much. Uh, you know, he lived in Constantia. He... Uh, I had an interview with him last year um, for a podcast that I was doing on Bulgarian organized crime in South Africa. Um, so the organization that he was involved in is called uh, VIS, V-I-S. Um, they're a Bulgarian, they're basically the Bulgarian mob. And he was very recently put on, on, the, uh, on an Interpol red notice. Um, after, I think it was the Supreme Prosecutor, the Prosecutor General in Bulgaria, announced that he was basically trying to organize um, nothing short of a, a coup d'etat. Uh, he was trying to, to um, incite and pay for uh, riots uh, to happen in Bulgaria, uh, which would, um, with, with the aim of changing government, uh, changing the government or government officials, and uh, changing the prosecutor general and some of the prosecutors who... Um, was sort of involved in in clamping down on organized crime in Bulgaria. So in South Africa, he li he lived a very inconspicuous life. I think uh, he was uh, very very below the radar. Um, him and his wife, uh, he had a bunch of bodyguards um, who would protect him and his family and take their kids to uh, to school every day. Um, but what he was actually doing here is he was um, the, presumably, allegedly, the head of a, a syndicate that specialized in uh, sort of financial crimes, um, uh, what we call credit card fraud or credit card skimming. Um, he seemed to be a figurehead in that, uh, in, in that sort of industry. Um, so, yeah, that, in a nutshell, that's, that's pretty much uh, what, what he was doing here. It's, it's interesting to see he was able to basically come here, uh, presumably he must have had some links to people here, able to start up some kind of corrupt enterprise, as you say, allegedly. Um, and that's quite something to do if you come from Bulgaria to South Africa. I mean, there can be language difficulties, all sorts of things, but he was able to basically set up yeah. shop here. Yeah, well, uh, it once again shows that South Africa is a premium destination for organized crime. Um, networks around, from across the globe. Um, there's various reasons for that, uh, but the, I think the main reason is a um, deteriorating law enforcement and intelligence environment. So coming off and his network have been on uh, the radar of the authorities in South Africa for decades. Um, in the, the Scorpions had a project, a, a, like a big organized crime project, um, on the Bulgarian, on Bulgarian, basically the Bulgarian mafia in South Africa in the 2000s. And as we know, the Scorpions were disbanded, um, because, you know, they were becoming too good at their job, uh, for certain politicians. So, um, that, uh, that allowed them to, to go under the radar again. Uh, the fact that Kamenov, wasn't even arrested. So everybody knew that he was here. I mean, I, I interviewed him in, in, was it July maybe last year? And, um, you know, he was a voice in my podcast. Um, and it, like he, he had been living then in South Africa for at least a month, uh, while these, while this red notice was out for him and he wasn't touched uh, by it. You know, nobody, nobody in South Africa, he lived in Constantia. They could have gone and arrested him. Um, if there was um, that uh, synchronization between Interpol and the South African authorities, but clearly there's, there's a bit of a uh, yeah, lack of communication over there. Um, but it, it, they've been here for decades now, uh, this Bulgarian organized crime uh, network, and they're incredibly good at uh, smuggling. It's, it's sort of their main 
thing. It uh, arises uh, from the Soviet Union, sort of Bulgaria was, had a state run um, sort of international smuggling, you could call it a syndicate, but it was a, it was a state run organization. Um, and a lot of these um, organized crime figures learned the tools of the trade, uh, the tricks of the trade while they were working for the Bulgarian state. Um, so it was a natural um, evolution for, for a lot of these guys to just go into smuggling. And as we know, they were involved in this massive cocaine bust in, uh, or co- cocaine smuggling operation, which was bust uh, by the South African police in Saldana Bay in 2021. Um, but I mean, the, the amount of cocaine that they're smuggling, that they're trafficking around the world, it's, uh, it's a very, very sophisticated logistical operation uh, to pull that off. Um, but I mean, the fact that he was planning riots and a coup d'etat and murders and a car bomb, um, in, in, uh, Bulgaria while living in Constantia, uh, you know, it, I think the, one of the other reasons why organized crime enjoys South Africa is the infrastructure as well. There's infrastructure and then lacks law enforcement. So, sure. you know, they can, they can have Zoom meetings uh, with their colleagues in Bulgaria undisturbed while living in the leafy suburbs. And Aaron, I mean, it's amazing. We get very, very cross when our country, when, you know, we ask things of Interpol, we issue red notices for people and the people we want to be arrested aren't. <coughs> we can hardly complain when we do the same thing, can we? I mean, as you say, they seem to, he seemed to have been running all sorts of things from here. And from what we can tell, our government didn't act at all. I mean, it's astonishing you were able to actually interview him even though he was already on a yeah. notice. Well, when, when I interviewed him, sorry for that uh, car, when I interviewed him, uh, I didn't know uh, that he was um, the head of the mob in Bulgaria. Uh, I, I might have thought twice before actually uh, picking up the phone and calling him. Um, and his wife, I mean, his wife took the phone from him halfway through our conversation and, you know, had a few choice words for me. Um, you know, why Why do I call about Bulgarian organized crime when there's so much other organized crime happening in South Africa? That was the gist of the conversation. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the, the, I think, to, just to, to illustrate or get to, to the, the core of the, the point that you're making, organized crime networks, um, have no problems um, basically communicating with each other, uh, working hand in glove with each other from around the globe. Yes, they do uh, tend to kill each other, um, but for the most part, they're not, uh, they're not prohibited by all the bureaucracy that um, our police seem to be prohibited by when meeting with their colleagues from Australia or meeting with their colleagues from the UK or Bulgaria. Um, there's so much diplomacy, there's so much diplomatic red tape, so much nonsense that stands in the way of, um, you know, law enforcement actually being able to do its job. And it all comes down to politics and geopolitical considerations and, and to be fair, just nonsense. Um, and we, you know, us as South Africans, we are the victims of, of um, organized crime groups working in South Africa. The money is being taken out of South Africa, billions and billions of rands, which are not, uh, none of those rands are taxed. It's leaving the country and it's not, um, contributing to, um, to, you know, government, um, functions. It's not contributing to, to schooling or infrastructure development or anything like that. It's taken from drug addicts. Um, and sure. it's, and it goes to Dubai at the end of the day. <laughs> and Aaron, I mean, the fact he was shot dead. Do we know what happened there? Who would do it? And I mean, the first suspicion, I mean, my first suspicion, I'm no expert, is that this is some kind of hit. Some deal went wrong. Someone got cross, and that was that. Yeah, well, there's there's three theories, actually. Um, The one is that it might have had to do with a big um, uh, cocaine trafficking um, situation, if I could put it that way, cocaine deal that that, uh, went wrong. Uh, the other is that it had perhaps had to do with uh, one coin, which is this huge cryptocurrency scam involving a Russian bank. Um, and the other uh, theory, the third theory, is that it may have had something to do with infighting within his um, his organized crime organization, VIS, and that um, his former partner 
or former you know, brother in crime, I guess, um, had ordered the hit against him. But as for the hitmen, probably uh, Serbs or um, uh, Serbian nationals or, or people from, from Eastern Bloc countries, the Bulgarian Mafia uh, is renowned for its, use, uh, uh, for its use of Serbian hitmen. Uh, who seem to be very profic- uh, proficient in, uh, in murdering people, and they usually are flown into the country, um, you know, uh, do, the, do the hit uh, very professionally, and then fly out before the police um, are able to, to get them. Um, so, but in this case, it was executions. Um, all four people were made to lay down with their hands cuffed. Uh, behind their backs, and they were shot at uh, point-blank range um, from behind while lying on the floor. Sure. So, yeah, these were, these were professional executions. Erwin Hyman, thank you very much indeed. Really do appreciate the time, of course, from uh, Times Live, the organization. He's a journalist there.